his good and his mercy endureth forever and ever. We want to strip today. We want to do. We want to strip today. That's what we want to do. We want to strip. We want to. We want to strip today. Um, let's pray before we we jump into the word, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your goodness, and we bind any evil force, negative thoughts, demonic thoughts that block the word of God from flowing. Father, I release your heavenly spirit to fill this place so that that your words flow clearly and powerfully in the hearts and minds of your children the believers. We thank you for it. We thank you for the power of the word. We thank you for all things in Jesus name. Amen. So we're going to do some stripping today. So we're going to come to church. We're going to do some stripping. Um, That's one thing. And my, the title of the lesson is Godzilla. The power within. Right? And Mama Bray, I was thinking about you when I thought of the title. <laughs> in a good way, Mama Bray, in a good way. In a good way. Yeah, I, I thought about you. I said, my, my goal, I want to, I just, I don't know why I thought about you, but I want to make, I want to have, uh, I want to turn Mama Bray into Godzilla before she leaves here. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, I want to turn you into Godzilla before we leave here. Not only Mama Bray, but I want all of you to become Godzillas before you leave here today. Godzilla's a bad dude. So it's, the title is Godzilla with hyphen the power within. Godzilla with the power within. So let me just do this. Let me give you two um, foundational scriptures that I think that you need to have uh, so that you fully get the impact of the word this morning. Um, put me on a timer up there so I don't preach two hours. <laughs> I have been in the Copeland. I have been in the Copeland. I was sitting up front. He, he preached two hours. I have, I have been in services like that. So the first scripture is John 17, 23. John 17, 23. Um, And it says, I in them and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou has loved me. So I in them, and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, and thou hast loved me. And go back up to verse 20. Go up to verse 21, because I'm going to read this. Also, what Jesus was saying, that they all may be one as thy, as thou father art in me and I in thee. You see that? How he's done. This is Jesus, red writing. Jesus said that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee. So the father is in Jesus and Jesus is in the father that they also may be one in us. Okay. So that's important that you know that to, so to, be, be, to become Godzilla, 
You have to know that God is in Jesus, Jesus is in God, and we're in them and they're in us. We, we, we got that? That they may all be one as the Father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. So that, in other words, no so there, but so that the world may believe that thou has sent me. So the only way the world is going to believe that Jesus was sent to this world is they see a relationship of oneness between us and Jesus, right? And if we are one with Jesus, then we're one with the Father. All right, we got that? Amen. Because that, that's, in, that's, in, that's, in, that's important because you have to know what's inside of you. We're in them, they're in us. And so that's what's inside of you. Sometimes when we're living in this world, we're only thinking about us. We're not remembering what's inside of us. So that's important for you to understand that. Now, the second scripture that you, the foundational scripture is Matthew 28, 18th verse. Uh, put it in the Amplified, please. Jesus approached and breaking the silence said to them, now look at this very clearly, all authority, all power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So, the critical foundation scripture because one is very important to the other is there's a connection there the first verse that we read in John 17 I wanted to be you to understand that there is a connection between you and Jesus you and Jesus are one you're in him and he's in us yes. all right so there is no separation there so it's very important that you understand the context context of this verse in oneness because Jesus approached, breaking the silence, said to them, Jesus said to them, but I can also say Dennis, because, de because Jesus and Dennis are one, right? So I can say Dennis, because Jesus and Dennis are one. So for all my weaknesses, because I'm connected to Jesus, he makes up for all my Weaknesses. If I'm inadequate, Jesus makes up for my inadequacies because we are one together. Amen. So, Jesus said to them, all authority, all power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus said that. So I can say it too. Because there's a oneness there. There's a connection. Jesus said all authority. So then that means now, that means from where you live at right now, there is a, because you believe in Jesus Christ, because you're born again, you have certain authority that comes with saying yes to Jesus that other people don't have. Because when you say yes to Jesus, you become one, because now you become in him. Amen. Right? And so because you're in him, now you have a certain level of authority. So your success in this life does not depend on your own talents and your own gifts because I'm connected to the Father. So that should change your perspective. Perspective drives thinking. So the first thing I have to do is give you where you are. First things first. Who are you? What are you made of? You're made of Jesus. 
What does that mean? It means that you have all authority and all power on this earth. So that should give you a different perspective. Instead of trying to figure out how I'm going to fight to be successful, wait a minute. You're already successful. You just got to figure it out. And I'm going to help you figure some stuff out today. My job is to make you a Godzilla today. That's my job. First things first, you got to know who you are, what's in you, so you know what's in you. You're full of Jesus Christ. Okay? You can't, you can't demonstrate a Godzilla form and not understand that you have a high level authority on this earth. And what you, can, what you say on this earth will affect the activity in heaven. Wow, you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me, so you didn't hear me, so you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me. What you say at 401 Chestnut Street will cause activity in the heavens. Because there's a, when I, when I speak the right language, it will move things in the unseen world. It will also move things in the physical world. But since the things that we see were made of the things that are unseen, you want to go to the root. And so you want to be speaking to the things in the unseen because it's going to have a dramatic effect on the things that are seen. Because the things that are seen were made by the things that are unseen. So so devil wants to keep you in the sea realm. So but... The Spirit of God wants you to go to another room, another realm, which the devil can't control. He can't control the unseen realm. But you can go in the seen realm and the unseen realm just by the language in which you speak. You have that much authority. As a human being, you have that much authority. You can affect the seen and you can affect the unseen just by what you say. Partly, first part, is for you to know that. So the outcome of my life does not depend on my own ability. It depends on my perspective and my thinking and what I say. If my perspective is right, then my thinking is right, and then my speech is right. You cannot live at any higher than you think. So the higher I think of myself, that's the higher I'll live in this world. The more I understand my authority... As a child of the living God, the more than I can use it on this earth. I said to you earlier, Jesus did not die just for you to struggle in this world. See, but the, your perspective is this. Your perspective of being a winner and living is that you never go through anything. That's your perspective of winning. But that's not Jesus' perspective of winning. His perspective of winning, that you will go through the furnace fire and you'll still come out a winner. That means you might go through hurts. That means you might go through pains. That means you might go through sorrow. But Jesus said, when you go through the fiery furnace, I will ensure, I promise you that I will never leave you nor forsake you, that you will come out on the other side. Change your perspective. Your perspective is not that you won't ever go through things. That's not the perspective. The perspective is whatever you go through. However you fall, however far you may fall, it does not matter. You will win. That is your perspective. So many times. Christians get lost in what they're going through. What you go through is a distraction by Satan to get you off of your purpose and try to treat you like this circumstance mountain is so big you can't get through it. And God says he wants Dennis to have faith in him orchestrate the word of God through faith so he can destroy the mountain. Yes, sir. 
Because actually, the mountain is an illusion. Wait, 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 I'm going to get deep on you real quick. Though you may feel it, though you may see it, though it may try to change all the surrounding environments, it's an illusion. It's the, it's the thing that the devil puts in front of you to make you believe it's so powerful that it'll conquer you. But you got to remember that Jesus already overcame every single thing. He over, listen, on the cross, Jesus overcame depression. He overcame hurt. He overcame sorrow. He overcame addiction. Everything that you go through, it was nailed to the cross. But we forget about our authority and we get caught up in our feelings that our feeling begins to drive our perspective and not our faith in God. So I have to get to a place where I ignore my feelings and have faith in God so my faith drives my perspective. If my faith drives my perspective, then my thoughts are different. Then I think about victory. If I am concentrating on what I see, your perspective is wrong. Because the affliction that you go through is only temporary. Are you with me? Okay, let's go to Colossians 1. Let's, 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 let's dig this out. Colossians 1. New King James Version. Colossians 1. Verse 13. Go amplify, please. Go amplify. So they, can, so they can see this. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself. Out of, listen, listen, I want you to really listen to this. God has delivered us and drawn us to himself. Right? So he pulled us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness. So when you feel like nothing, you must deal with that feeling through the word and through your mouth. Because that feeling of insecurity and doubt and I'm no good has been nailed to the cross. So what I'm, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to uh, uh, allow, if you hear something in and the Holy Spirit touches you, and you've been dealing with something. I don't know, an addiction, insecurity, a depression, suicidal thoughts. If you've been dealing with anything, and you need, and you need to come up to change your perspective, and you need to come up and you need to nail it to the cross, you have my permission to do so. Because sometimes you need to do something different than you've never done before. If you've got a physical ailment that it, it seems like it's a stronghold on you, then you've got to nail that thing to the cross. If Satan attacking your children, you've got to nail it to the cross. First thing we're going to do, how we nail it to the cross, we no longer say, I have this or my child has this. We don't say that. My, you know, you know my, my child got ADD. Why, why are you saying that? Then they, then they got it. That's all I can say. They got it. You say it. They believe it because you say it. Stop saying it. Well, my child can't do this. Stop saying it. We can't be afraid to confront things. We can't be a, if you still got a, if you still got a funky attitude, 
then you got to nail that funky attitude to the cross. Because if you still, if you, if you still got that little attitude and you still got that little anger problem, you need to nail it to the cross. It's not okay for you to say, it's just me. This is how I am. That's, that, that's not, that's a lie. That's defeat. Your perspective is off. How can you say I'm just like this and you want to live above these beggarly elements of the world? You can't do it. Because the devil will send something to you to get you all stewed up and you act out of character and you then go act like a fool and then you're going to try to come over here and believe for God you can't do it. You need to nail that attitude to the cross. You got eating disorder, eating problems, and you got to nail it to the cross. If I say, I, I can't stop eating fried chicken, well, then nail it to the cross. No, two people, too long, two people are overweight in the church. Right? They're overweight in the church, and they want to sit in there and don't do anything about it. And sometimes it's not the devil killing folks. It's being overweight and unhealthy is killing folks. And we blame it on the devil. But God has given us revelation to know how to live long. And if you can't control, if you can't control your mouth to your stomach, then you need to nail it to the cross. Because if it affects your, how long you live, then you need to nail it to the cross. There should be nothing on this earth that drives your behavior but you. If something is driving your behavior, it's wrong and it's ungodly. Nothing should be driving your behavior except the things in the word of God. And we need to just nail it to the cross. Now, if you want to sit there and be embarrassed... And you sit there and be embarrassed. But I'm telling you that sometimes you got to think, do some things at an appointed time to get rid of some stuff. And you got to do whatever it takes. I got to get rid of this stuff from me. I got some baggage that nobody knows about. I need to nail that baggage that stink me. I need to nail it to the cross. But nobody knows about it but me. And it's just, it's just this thing. It's just this thing that I've been dealing with. And I'm going to nail it to the cross forever. Nail it to the cross. Nail it to the cross. See, there are certain times in life where you just got to say, no, I'm changing my course. I'm changing my perspective. I'm changing what I've done. I'm going to live for God and God alone. I'm going to walk in a certain authority that I've never walked before. I'm nailing distractions. Boom, to the cross. If, if things distracted me from fulfilling my purpose, I just nailed it to the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, talking, I'm talking about not just going to church. I'm talking about changing how I live, changing how I think, changing who I am, changing how far I'm going, changing generations of my family. I have kids, and they're going to have kids. How I am in my perspective, it's important because it's going to affect my generation after generation in my whole entire family. Amen. That's how important this is. Colossians 13, Amplified. He's trans he, he's, he he drawn us to himself out of the control and dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his son, of his love. Verse 15. Now he is, not talking about Jesus. Now he is, now watch this, I want you to understand this. Now he is the exact likeness of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible. That's what Jesus was. So when you saw Jesus in the flesh, he was the representation of the unseen God, and he was in flesh form. Matter of fact, it says the word became flesh. He is the firstborn of all creation. Next verse. For it was in him that all things were created in heaven and on earth. Now, I want you to get this. Things seen and unseen, because I want you to understand how powerful being connected to Jesus is. 
Jesus understands, and he's saying that he was, he was there, he created all things, things seen and unseen. So instead of you using your, your little PD brain to try to figure something out, you use the Holy Spirit that's going to help you because the Holy Spirit's connected to the seen and unseen. Yeah. So instead of you trying to figure out in your strength and you start, I can't do it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit, yeah. how do I figure out what I'm going to do next? So, Because you got to look at this. Why are you trying to figure out what you're going to do next? The Holy Spirit knows you better than anybody. And so he's saying, for it was in him that all things were created in heaven and on earth, things seen and unseen, things seen and things unseen, whether there be thrones, dominion, rulers, or authorities, all things were created and exist through him by his service intervention in and for him. Amen. Okay? Amen. It's important that you understand the authorities of thrones and dominions. Verse 17. And he himself existed before all things, and in him all things consist, or held together by him. Wow. I'm worried about, I'm, I'm, see, that's what I'm talking about. I got an attitude of victory. All these circumstances coming against me, and I have a Savior who's in me, and, he, and all things consist of him, but yet I'm worrying. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm stressed. I'm frustrated. Well, why are you frustrated? Jesus is alive. Don't love Jesus and be frustrated. Don't allow yourself to be frustrated. You can't have, don't you understand that Jesus doesn't want you to be frustrated? He doesn't want you to worry. He doesn't want you to be in fear. He died so you wouldn't have to. He nailed the fears to the cross. He nailed frustration to the cross for you. He nailed hurt and pain to the cross for you. He does not want you to come here raising your hand and praising him and then go home and be frustrated by life. Amen. That's not what he wants. That's not what he died for. Next verse. And he's also the head. Watch this. Watch this. It's important because this has to do with you. He is the head of his body, the church. No, no, you got to understand it. Look at it. Physical reputation. Look at the person next to you. You see their big old head? Right? You see it, right? What's connected to their big old head? The body. Jesus is the head, and we're the body. Matter of fact, he wants to preach this to you so that you can go ahead and really be his body. He needs you to be his hands. He needs you to be his mouth. Amen. That's what Jesus needs from the church. Yeah. And he also is the head of his body, the church, seeing that he is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that he alone in everything and every respect might occupy the chief place, stand first, stand first and be preeminent. Amen. Verse 19. For it has pleased the Father, watch this, watch this, watch this. It has pleased the Father that all the divine fullness, the sum total of the divine perfection, powers, and attributes should dwell in him permanently. So understand this. I'm connected to Jesus. He's in me. And all, and all, and all, and all, and all, and all of the divine fullness is wrapped right up in me. See, see you, more, you, more just, you more than just a Joe Schmo. You know, no, no, no. There's something different. you got something inside you that's so powerful, that's so different. All the divine fullness, all the power of God, the wisdom of God, the glory of God, the goodness of God is all wrapped up inside of you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Verse 20. I can't be frustrated. I refuse to live frustrated with all that in, in me. And God purposed that through, by the service, the intervention of him, the son, all things should be completely reconciled back to himself, whether, watch this, on earth or in heaven, as through him the father made peace by means of the blood of his cross. We have been set free. We are delivered by the blood. And he said, I want you to take all your inadequacies, 
all the things that you think that you can't do and all your ugliness and all your weaknesses, and I want you to nail them to the cross. And then, then, then I want you to, your perspective to change between now, it's me and you, Jesus and me, Jesus and me against the world. It's me and Jesus against the world. Me and Jesus, me and Jesus, me and Jesus. So when something comes up against me, it's me and Jesus, me and Jesus, me and Jesus, me and Jesus. All the defined fullness, all that power, everything is me and Jesus, me and Jesus, me and Jesus, me and Jesus, me and Jesus. Attack comes against my family. It's me and Jesus, me and Jesus, me and Jesus, me and Jesus. There's there's evidence of 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 my body not being completely healed. Me and Jesus, me and Jesus, me and Jesus. Because I got a divine power in me that's full of God. Full of power. In me, me and Jesus. Look, Jesus, we're going to attack this, Jesus. We're going to attack this. We're going to attack this. This circumstance has been setting me. We're going to attack it. I don't like the way my household is running, Jesus. We're going to attack it. My, my perspective changes from being frustrated by things that I don't like and set, then now it's attacking things that I don't like. And that I'll never succumb to the things that I don't like. And I'm definitely not going to say the things that I like. And I'm definitely not going to say my kid has ADD or my kid has this and my kid. That's definitely not going to come out of my mouth because I'm a victor in Christ Jesus. I don't care if I got to say it the rest of my life. But I won't stand there and allow Satan to talk to me and I do nothing. I got an eating problem and I do nothing, nothing but sit there and do, I do nothing. And then it kills me. And then we say at the funeral, God took him. You didn't nail it to the cross. You didn't nail it to the cross. When we nail it to the cross, now watch we do. Watch we do then we strip ourselves. When we, nail, when, we, when, we, when we nail the things that beset us, our own inadequacies, when we nail it to the cross, addiction, lust, sexual immorality, we nail it to the cross. Attitude's a big one with church people. Because you sit here year after year, week after week, month after month, and do nothing about your stinky poo-poo attitude. You don't strip yourself. You don't strip yourself. Strip yourself. Strip it. At the feet of the cross. I need you, God said, I need you to strip yourself. I need you to be open and bare and naked before me so I can build you up and make you new so that I can use you for my kingdom. I can't afford to let your own attitude get in the way. You still have to be right all the time. You still on that? You always have to be right. Always, your wife can't get a word edgewise because you want to be right and try to dominate. You still there? Well, humble yourself. Strip yourself. And nail it to the cross. Yes, Lord. He wants to strip you so he can build you up. Amen. Yes, Lord. I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, if, it, if, there's any, if there's any ill intentions in my heart to pierce it, I'll take it out, Father. I'll come before you naked and i come before you, Father, and just take it out. Anything that you know my thoughts, you know my intentions, and, and Father, you know some of those thoughts I have that are no good. I bring my thoughts before you, Father. I bring, my, I bring those nasty thoughts before you, and I bring it into the foot of the cross. And take those thoughts out, Father, and I and I and I nail them and I nail them to the cross. I want you, I want to, I want to be I want to be focused on you, Father. I don't got time for mess. I want to be focused on you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Authority is, is delegated power. I, I want to I want to I want to go to. Can you bring up video one, please? They need to see video one.
Thank you, Father. While, while they're bringing up video one, I want you to go to Ephesians 2, please. While they're bringing up video one, go to Ephesians 2. Go ahead, play it. Yeah. This is Godzilla. Listen, because there's some time in your life when things are not going right. You got you to gotta, you gotta yell from the spirit, from the spirit. And you got to yell. You got you to gotta, you gotta disrupt the flow. There, 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 there's a force. There's a demonic force that's, that's coming against you. And sometimes you got to yell, no! Jesus, no, this sickness can't have my body. No, they can't have my house. No, Jesus, I want to be successful. No, this addiction can't control me any longer. No! Because that roar sets the temperature for the whole environment. When I yell from my spirit, it changes the entire environment in the seen world and the unseen world. I'm leaving what I can do, and now I'm yelling from my spirit in Jesus' name. Refuse to let this circumstance overtake me. Now watch, I want you to, I want you to watch, because this is important for your perspective. The rest of that video. Stop it now! I want you to just, now. I want you. I want you to understand what just happened. You you yelled from your spirit, and guess what Satan did? So what? So Satan comes, and now he gets up and he yells. Did you see what just happened? See the other monster? You see the other monster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you think because you yell, it's just going to run away so easy. But sometimes when you yell, that the circumstance keeps coming at you. It's trying to keep coming at you so that you back off your faith. So sometimes when you yell, sometimes you yell, the, the, the appearance of the circumstance keeps coming like nothing's changing. I'm trying to change your perspective so that you can become a Godzilla. So just because you yell, it doesn't mean necessary that every demon or demonic force is going to run away and hide. That force will keep coming at you. No, I don't believe them. They don't really have faith in God. Now watch. Watch something. Think of that imagery. Let's read Ephesians 2 6. New King James, please. And he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Jesus, and then now you know what I wrote at the end of that? At the right hand of the Father. So, you're not, so you see my position now? Even though Satan and those demonic forces try to tell me, I don't believe you, I still have a hold on your situation. I got to remember my position. I have a seat of authority. I have been raised up in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Just because the circumstance didn't run away does not mean my position of authority has changed at all. Amen. This is how you put an end to it. Go to Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1, Amplified, verse 18.
by having the, watch this, watch the, watch the gate, watch the gate, by having the eyes of your heart, woohoo, the eyes of your heart, woohoo, that's the word getting in there. See, see, when you yell, you can, it could be yelling from a good emotion, it could be yelling from the spirit, but something else that has to go with that yell. That word of God has to become one with you. Where you believe the word more than that circumstance still coming at you. So the word of God says, <clears throat> by having the eyes of your heart flooded with the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we know this, darkness cannot comprehend light. So I got to get light on this situation. I got to get light on this demonic force. I got to get light. So I flood my heart with the word of God, which is living, which is powerful. So once I make my stance, see, that roar is me making a stance. No! Now I make my stance. Now I got to back that stance up with something. So by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. Don't you get it? There's a calling on you. There's a calling on, on you to go out and show the glory of God. So anything that tries to stop that calling, you have to recognize it. And God is saying, be of good courage. <laughs> have faith in God. Amen. Hope and understand to which he has called you and how rich his glorious inheritance in the saints his set apart ones. Verse 19. Watch this, watch this. And so that you know, now what's that, what's that? You have to know this. I don't care what happens to counteract your faith stance. You have to know and understand what is the immeasurable. Woo, Jesus. That word is immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in me. Glory to God. You, you, you got to see that. That means there's something that's in me that's going to defy the odds. There's something that's in me that's going to say all things are possible to him that believeth. There's something that's in me that's going to say greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. There's something that's in me. This surpassing power is ready to take on anything that comes in your path. But your, if your perspective is this disease or this ailment is bigger than I can handle, it's bigger than the word of God, then it stays it's like a strong man. It won't go anywhere. I put this down. That power within us is unlimited, undeniable, is unstoppable, and is unbeatable. Put up video two, please. Play it. You got it, you got it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! See, when I, when I get to a point when I've had enough, when I had enough of you trying to hold me back, I've had enough. I've had enough. And then I, and then it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. This is me and God. And I, I'm bruised. I'm bruised. 
And I speak from a depth of, from me that I've never known that I had. And it just comes out and it changes the whole atmosphere. What's happening is Ephesians 6.10. Put up, put up Ephesians 6.10. This, this is what is actually happening. And be strong in the Lord, being empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength with its boundless might provides. Be strong in the Lord, in King James. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Every single weakness could be still there. Every weakness that you have can be still there. Every inadequacy could be still there. But you have this faith in God. You believe that the word of God is true. You believe that God is who he said he is. And then now you begin to now, don't you see the power from within? The first part was the roar. Set in the atmosphere. The demon kept on coming. But then he went to a whole nother level. And then the word of God began to come out of his belly flowing like living waters. And the word comes out. Word spills out with power. And the word spills out with authority. And the word, and the word conquers. And the word condemns. And the word nullifies. And the word conquers. And the word comes out. And the word comes. And the word comes full of power, full of might. The word, the word, the word, the word, the word, and then it comes. Thank you, Father. The perspective is this, that when you make your stance of faith and that devil tries to come at you again, then you up the ante of your faith. You up the ante of your faith. My wife and I, we're, bu we're building a house. And so we're building a house. And you know, I told you before that we, 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 we said we we're going to put money, put money away in the savings and stuff for the house. And then we said, okay, now we're going to give a certain amount to God. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna put faith involved in it. Because you can do things naturally and you can do things by the spirit. So we, so what we did, we, we added an extra $500 and we're going to, Give it and we're going to sow our seed. Yeah. We're sowing the seed by faith. Yeah. And, so, and so what happened was then the devil came back. Allah! And then all these, all these things that we wanted on the house, they, 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 they started to come back like 13,000, 10,000, 15,000 for all these things that we wanted on the house. The circumstance cried, ha! Yell back at us. So we made some compromises on what we were going to do and what we weren't going to do. You know, that didn't sit well with me. That didn't sit well with me. That didn't sit well with me. That did, it, did, it just didn't sit well with me. Making compromise, okay, we can do this, we can't do that, we can do this, we can do it. That didn't sit well with me. And so we made a confession. No more compromises. Amen. But you gotta up the you gotta up the ante. You gotta you gotta up the ante. See what circumstance, what circumstance do they try to talk to you to put you back in your place? And they'll do it, try to put you back in your box. Then you gotta we gotta up the ante. Okay, Come on. Come on. You do, then you gotta do you gotta do a faith act. Yeah, so my wife calls me, she says, Hey, I wanna I wanna do this. Okay. But you don't you don't allow stuff to dictate to you. And Jesus is in me. I can live natural and I can be like, oh, man, you know what? Well, it is what it is. I mean, I guess I guess got to deal with it. But, but, but listen, either we live in this word or not. I, I, it, it, just, it just bothered my spirit. It wasn't, it wasn't right. It, was, it just bothered me. It, it just didn't sit right. I can't be preaching to you and not living by faith. Mm -mm, I can't do that. I won't be. I don't. Mm -mm, 
I don't want to be struck down dead and just like that. No, sir. Amen. I ain't going to preach to you one thing and not living. Amen. No, no, sir. No. Mm -mm. So what you do, so what you do is you got to sell out a little bit more. You got to take a, yeah, the devil, the devil try to talk to you again, you got to sell out a little bit more. He still got to talk to you, you got to sell out a little bit more. The further you get away from yourself, the more you get closer to God, you know. So the more, the more, the more circumstances try to talk to you, oh, you can't do this and you're stuck here, you're stuck in this position. You know, a lot of times people think just because you got a certain job, this is where I'm stuck at. I got a certain education, this is where I'm stuck at. Who told you that? Who told you that? Do you believe in God or not? You see where I'm trying to get us to? I'm, to, I'm, trying, to get a, I'm trying to get to a point that you become a Godzilla, and wherever you're at on your walk in this life, don't settle because the world say you have to settle. Oh, you know what? This is my job. I only got this certain education, and I'm always struggling, and I mean, I, 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 that's all I can do. Listen, man, you got the word of God right here. You got the word right here. Who told you that? Enough's enough. It's time to roar. It's time to change some things. Jesus did not die on a cross for you to struggle. If you're struggling, you're allowing it. Now, I know you didn't like that, but I'm telling you the truth. You need to hear it. You need to hear it. So that you could change the way your your perspective and the way you're doing things. You can't sell out by trying to be comfortable. You can't sell out to God by trying to be comfortable. I don't know. I don't know if we should do. I don't know if we should do that. I'm. I, I don't know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to work it out. So, wow. Go to Daniel, please, Daniel 3. Well, <clears throat> let's go to Daniel 3 and 14, 6. We know John 14, 6. We know that verse. But I, wa I want you to look at it from a different perspective, John 14, 6. Put it up on the screen, just New King James Version, John 14, 6. We know it, but I want you to really... I looked at it differently um, this week when I was thinking about this message and meditating on it. Jesus said to him... I am the way. And so what the Holy Spirit said to me, yeah, Dennis, he is the way. <clears throat> Anytime you don't know where you're going or what's going to happen, you know that Jesus is the way. Amen. And I never thought of it like that. I always thought this, with this verse associated with heaven and being saved, but I never thought about it. No, this is now. This is for me now. Amen. Jesus can make a way for you. Yes, he, can. he is the way for you. So I said, oh, I got, oh, I got it. Amen. Jesus is the way. Truth, now watch this, watch this, watch this. Truth sets you free. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <clears throat> so when I was talking about nailing <clears throat> things to the cross, I'm trying to get for you to nail some of that stuff to the cross to get you over in the truth arena because the truth sets you free. See, if you're bound by something, truth is not working. So I'm trying to get you to bind whatever it is, put it on the cross so that you can be free. Amen. And I wrote something down. I wrote something down for you. Let me see. I, I wrote something down. And I said this. The way. Just dealing with the way, the truth, and the life. Repeat patterns. Demons, evil spirits, demonic forces want to hold you hostage to continuous repeat patterns. Yeah. <clears throat> and it holds you hostage to how you feel about a present circumstance or condition. And it repeats those negative thoughts, and it plays out to you 
and you've been in the same repeat pattern over and over again. It might not be the same circumstance, but it could be something different, but how your perspective and how you approach it is just like how you approach it all the 10 last times. And so what happens? Your, your environment doesn't change. You don't get victory out of it. God's word, truth, frees you from your present condition, your, your present condition. And you have access. Truth gives you access to the impossibility of God's goodness and his glory. So you have to analyze your thought patterns. Or your th when things occur against you, what are your thought patterns? How do you handle certain things when you come against adversity? What is your thought pattern? Is every adverse thing that happens to you, do you use the same thought pattern? How do you react when you're trying to walk by faith and then there's negative things that happen after it? What do you do? What's your thought pattern towards it? The devil's a roaring lion seeking whom he will devour. He's not going to run just because you said, oh, I receive it by faith. He ain't going to run away from you. That roar is your first part. The power within when Godzilla finally got to a point. When Godzilla finally gets to a point when he's had enough, he uses that power within to deal with all the circumstances. And you notice when he deals with it, he, and he's, when he's walking, he destroys all those little things in his pathway. Now, I'm going to send you one, I'm going to send you one last scripture, and we're going to shut it down. I want to bring you to Daniel. Daniel 3, 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Next verse. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, yet that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? So you could be doing things for God, you could be doing the right things, and you still might come, you might still have some things might still come against you. Now, if you are ready at the time, you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, air, whatever, all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Good. So this is man talking to a believer, and this man is trying to tell the believer what I say is more important than what God says. I'm, giving a par I'm paraphrasing it. So this king or whoever, an official... Your boss, your friend, is giving you worldly advice, and the worldly advice is opposite to what you have learned. Amen. Then they might make a threat to you and say, well, if you don't do it this way, it won't work. Because that's what Nebuchadnezzar said. But if, if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace and who is the God who will deliver you from my hands now at that point now un understand why I said your perspective is important because we have to change our perspective that things won't won't happen to you in this life things where you will go through things in this life you will go through but it's how you handle what you go through what's going to separate you because I don't necessarily want to go through a fiery furnace, but if it be so, I'm going to stand with God and God alone. 
Because walking by faith is not the easy road necessarily. It's the better road, but it's not the easiest. Case in point. Well, I'm going to go to the doctor. Doctor checks me out, gives me the prescription. Go ahead, I'm going to do whatever the doctor says. Go back six months, do whatever he says. Watch, 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 watch this. And then that's it, and that's, where, and that's where I stay. I don't get in the scripture. Don't read, don't read the scripture over myself. Don't make any decrees and declare anything. I just do that. That's what I'm talking about. We're not talking about is whether going to the doctor is bad. We're talking about what your faith in is whether it's bad or good. I don't care if you go to 10, 20 bucks. Don't make, make me no difference. I'm talking about what, where your faith lies. Don't allow just how we live in this world to be your God. Because if you just go to the doctor, follow the prescription, and think that doctor is so smart, and you forget about your God, then who do you worship? Are you with me? What verse, were what, what verse was I on? No, nobody's paying attention but me. 16, all right. Here Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. I like that. Because people, people try to now really make you feel guilty about your faith stance and where you are believers and make you feel guilty, right? And you said, don't, don't worry about it. Don't, 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 don't worry about that. I don't got to explain to you why my God's going to deliver you. And, and, and God doesn't have to explain. You know, when you, when, you, when, you, when you make declarations and decree certain things, don't feel like you need to know how it's going to happen. I was just talking to myself in the bathroom. I was making some declarations in the bathroom. And I, and, and I, was, I wasn't going to the bathroom. I was in the bathroom. I was in the bathroom, and I was making some declarations, um, and, 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 I, and I said to myself, because you know you and you know how thoughts come. I said to myself, I don't need to know how. I don't need to know how it's going to happen. All I know is I'm doing what God told me to do. Because the next part is sense knowledge, and you'd be like, well, how's this going to happen? How's this going to work out? Well, you don't need to know. It's not for you to know. Well, you want to figure it out for yourself? God just told me to walk by faith and not by sight. I don't need to know. I'm like, God, well, how are you going to work that out? Who are you going to talk to? How are you going to make this work? I don't need to know that. That's God's business. So you don't, need to know, you don't need to know how it's going to work out, when it's going to happen. The only thing that God said for you to do is be a Godzilla and let that word come out of you and don't stop. Until that thing is destroyed or you overcome whatever is in front of you. If this is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Yeah, put me in the furnace, my God will still deliver me. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. They're making a stance. They're making a stance. So the doctor, might, the doctor might have his own stance. But you make your stance. Okay, doc. All right, I got you. Then go home and make your stance. Verse 19. Yeah, he is the way, the truth, and the life. But Daniel, verse 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went haste to the, verse 3, 19. Yes, that's a good account. But. <laughs> then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than, do you know that when you're trying, to, you're trying to stick with God and walk by faith, the situation will try to get so bad. I'm telling you this. I live this. Situation gets so bad. It gets so bad that you don't think there's a way out. 
Your condition may change. It might look like so bad. Like what is going on? That's, that's when you know it's working. You got to remember, that's when you know it's working. Oh, boy, that is, breakthrough is coming. When it, when it gets to the point where, like, you, you, you feel the pressure coming. And the pressure tries to break you. You got to know that you're right there. You're right there. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you're right there. You just stand. Man, he did it seven times hotter. Verse 20. Mm -mm -mm. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who, was, who were in his army to buy Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast him into the burning fire. See, see most people, their perspective is, oh, God is going to deliver me. I'm not going. But what if you do? But what if you do? God, if I don't, if I do, I'm still standing on your word. I'm still standing on your word. Let your perspective change. Your perspective changes no matter what happens. No matter what circumstance beset me, I don't care. I'm standing on the word and the word alone. If I lose everything, I'm standing on the word. But guess what? He's never let me fail yet. He's never let me gone under yet. Not one time have I gone under. Not one time. Not one. My felt like it sometimes. But I never was under. When is, when is, do you look around? When is victory coming? When is, where is victory? You look around and you don't see victory. But then you up the ante and you do a faith act. You stand on God's word. You yell if you need to. You sing a song. Whatever you need to do. But, but you're standing and you're holding on to God's unchanging hand. Glory to God. Sister Bray, I, need, I, want, I want you to sing God is for us. Let's, I, need, I, want, I want to hear that. We're going we're gonna to go home on God is. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to go home. See, see the, the, thing about, the, the thing about when you are... Hearing music, you got to connect it to the word. When I hear God is, I think all things are possible to him that believeth. With God, all things are possible. God is my all in all. Have a Godzilla mindset. Become a Godzilla in your own life. Praise God. Praise yes, God. Lord. God is my all in all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you I received that word. Amen. I am a Godzilla. Yes, you are. I am. Hey, Kabasa. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, you're attacking everything. Thank you, Lord. I'm coming. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you want to run to the cross, and nail something to the cross, then nail to the cross.